Sponsored by Brilliant. Go to brilliant.org slash vector to finish your day a little smarter every day. In my iPad Pro one year later of you, back in December, I said, with iPad OS, we got a ton of new long time coming features this year, including multi-windowing for every app. It works really, really well with a persistent, consistent, anything you can drag, you can drop into its own window mechanic. But I still find the execution of that mechanic, the getting in and out, totally gesture overloaded. I still trip all over myself all the time between having to swipe twice for the dock and mistriggering the drag gestures to get apps off the dock, and it all just really needs something that doesn't cause so many collisions so always. I'm clumsy, yes, but the software should absolutely take that into consideration. I don't know what the solution is. Maybe separating the setup from the usage dates might work. Since this week marked the 10 year anniversary of the iPad, it brought up a lot of praise and a lot of criticism from a lot of people. And chief among the criticism was the multi-window multitasking interactions. So what can be done about them? I'm Renee Ritchie and this is Vector. The iPad wasn't just a new category of device that deserved to exist between the phone and the laptop. It was a new category of device that found itself trapped between old traditional and future computing. If Steve Jobs' Apple had a singular mission, it was to make computing ever more accessible to the mainstream. From the Apple II to the Mac to the iMac, the iPad was supposed to be the next step. A computer so accessible that even those for whom the Mac was still unapproachable, alienating and inscrutable, were supposed to be able to pick it up, tap their way into apps, and simply, easily get done all the email, web surfing, game playing, book reading, photos, and other major tasks they needed to get done. When people talk about the iPad and its potential, this is what is so often forgotten. That accessibility, that inclusivity was the iPad's potential. It's why Steve Jobs called it the most important product of his life. Traditional computer users already had their tools, their Macs. The iPad was for the other 80% of humanity, for whom those tools were just too much, for whom the tyranny of the never mind command line, but the mouse and pointer, hierarchical file system, windows that could get lost under other windows, task managers, and all the other overhead that had accumulated as computers dragged themselves out of the primordial ooze of academia and enterprise and into the homes of regular humans. But when Steve Jobs introduced the iPad, the design, the custom silicon, it appealed to the traditional computer users as well, and at a deep level. They wanted it, but they also really wanted it to be a traditional computer, either a touchscreen Mac, why didn't Apple just make that? Or an iPad in name only that worked indistinguishably from a Mac. Remember, Steve Jobs and Scott Forstall rejected even AirDrop as being too complicated twice in a row before Federighi took over and shipped it. And now it's one of the most popular and stickiest features across Apple's platforms. That's because there's disagreement about this stuff inside Apple as well. They argue about the same kind of things we do and as passionately as we do. Sure. The primacy of the iPhone, its constant need to gobble up the vast majority of attention and resources held back the iPad's evolution, but so did the conflict over what precisely that evolution should be. Some fiercely believed that the iPad should stay true to the vision that Steve Jobs had when he introduced it. Simple, accessible, better at those exact key tasks, not worse for copying either phone or laptop tasks. Others just as fiercely believed the iPad needed not just evolution, but revolution, that it should serve the needs of mainstream users who are becoming every bit as sophisticated as traditional computer users. One thing Apple rejected outright was just copying and pasting features over from the Mac. That would have made many of the very loud, very vocal 20% of traditional computer users very happy, but it would have been detrimental not just to the 80 percent of the mainstream that found the iPad liberating to the point of being transformative, it would have also been a horrible waste of an opportunity to shed decades of baggage and reimagine computing for the modern era. Eventually, some decisions were made and we started to get things like the iPad Pro, the Apple Pencil, the smart keyboard, multi-window apps, drag and drop, and most recently, drag to window. But many of the implementations still aren't anywhere nearly ideal. Too complex for the mainstream, too limiting for the traditional computer users, they just end up frustrating everyone and freeing no one. There's a keyboard so you can type like you would on a laptop, but no way to move the cursor so you still have to keep taking your hands off the keyboard. There's gesture-based windowing, but the gestures are so overloaded, there's no way to discover them without confusion or use them without collision. 
Now, I think the functionality is ACES. It's just the current implementation that's, like I said, less than ideal. So I'm gonna steal a page from Dave Wiskus's Here's the Bad Version and offer up my solution for multi-window multitasking on the iPad in hopes people way smarter than me can come up with a much, much better version. The inherent problem with gestures is that there are very few simple intuitive ones. So if you try to use the same ones for too many things, people get confused and trip all over them and themselves. If you try to use complex gestures, it becomes like spell casting and they're hard to remember, much less get right. So I'm sticking with simple. Simpler, in fact. Single and double finger gestures, things like tapping and swiping and pinching just remain the way they are today as a way to navigate and interact within an app. Three finger gestures though, technically three or more finger gestures since dexterity goes down as finger count goes up, then become the providence of the system. So to launch a full screen app, you just tap on the icon like you do now. Then to go into multi-window, you three or more finger pinch to make the first app movable and drag it to the left or right of the screen to dock it, half size on that side of the screen. As soon as you start dragging, the interface shows you a bounding box for where the window will land. So you have both a preview and a target. At the risk of making things too complex, if you keep dragging towards the edge of the screen, instead of going into side-by-side -side mode, the app instead gets added to the top of the slide over stack instead. Once you've docked the first app, the other side shows a compact version of the home screen. Hey, Springboard can and should enjoy size classes too. Tap a second app and that app fills the other half of the screen. At any time, you can three or more finger pinch to make either app on either side movable again to either switch sides or push one of them into slide over. And if you pinch completely down on one side or the other, that app on that side closes and you get the compact home screen again so you can choose another app for side by side. Otherwise, you can three or more finger pinch and zoom the one app to fill the full screen or close it as well to go back to the full home screen. Also, and I can't stress this enough, when in side by side mode, whichever side you were last touching or typing into is colored and highlighted to show it's the active side. So you're never, not ever confused about where things are gonna happen next. You can still drag individual elements out of one window to make them take over another because that conforms with the rule of single or double finger gestures affecting what's in an app. To de-overload the current dock gestures though, it takes a three or more finger swipe up anywhere on the screen to bring the dock up and tapping on an app or a three or more finger swipe down, again, anywhere on the screen to hide it again. Same but in reverse for the workspace manager, three or more finger swipe down gives you an expose view and tapping on a workspace or a three or more finger swipe down makes it expose away again. I know three or more finger gestures might sound like a lot, Apple actually introduced four finger multitasking gestures for the iPad back in iOS 4.3, but they were disabled by default. And I remember watching some indie designers using them for a demo at WWDC the next year and navigating in a fluid and natural way beyond anything I'd ever seen before. Not all of those designers are so indie anymore. And I'd really love to see that fluidity, that naturalist become the norm for iPad multi-window multitasking. I just wish I had even one iota of coding skill so I could mock it up properly. But that's where Brilliant and its computer science fundamentals course comes in. With it, you can learn the key ideas of computer science in an interactive way. No coding required. It's ideal for high school or college students who wanna learn the fundamentals or an early professional who wants to strengthen their knowledge of core computer science concepts. Brilliant is a problem solving based website and app with a hands-on approach and over 60 interactive courses in math, science and computer science. Brilliant puzzles you, surprises you and expands your understanding of the modern world. The best resolution you can make this year is investing in your STEM skills. So go to brilliant.org vector and finish your day a little smarter every day. Thanks Brilliant and thanks to all of you for supporting the show. Okay, so everyone at Apple, hell, everyone in interactivity design might be laughing at me right now. Believe me, I completely understand that anything a blogger, podcaster, or a YouTuber can dream up, Apple is well-funded and well-staffed enough to have prototyped and tested already three ways to dub dub. But I also know that the current interactivity model just ain't it. Not for the mainstream and not for the traditionalists. And whether my idea is even workable or not, I hope at the very least it pushes the conversation forward. Because either way, full on multi-touch, multi-window multitasking is still a problem in desperate need of a real solution. So hit like if you do, subscribe if you haven't already, it really helps out the channel. Three or more fingers smash that bell gizmo so YouTube will actually tell you when the new videos go live and then hit up the comments and let me know what you think. Thank you for watching. See you next video.